Hi, this is Beth Daisy with Future Insight, and this video will teach you how to use New Hampshire's accessible voting system. It's called One for All, and it's designed so that voting can be accessible for persons with a wide range of disabilities, but anyone may request to use it. First, let me introduce you to the equipment you will use as part of the One for All system. First, there is an electronic tablet. Next, there is a high contrast, large print keyboard, and third, a set of headphones. Now, before you can vote, the moderator will need to enter a code for your town or ward so that you can access the correct ballot. Once the moderator has entered the pin, press the right or left arrow key to continue. The audio prompts begin immediately, so make sure to put your headphones on. The first screen that you'll interface with asks you if you'd like to use the touchscreen interface or the keyboard. In testing, I found that if you select keyboard, you can still interact with the touch screen. But if you select touch screen, the keyboard doesn't work and the audio continually prompts you to press the left or right arrow key, which seems a bit confusing. For this reason, I would suggest using the keyboard and that is what we'll demonstrate today. The poll worker can assist you in getting you set up so that you can find the appropriate keys on the keyboard. You will certainly want to know where the arrow keys and the enter keys are located. The first thing that comes up is a set of instructions. These will always remain on the left side of the tablet screen. Let's review them now. Press the left and right arrow keys to move through the screen. Press the enter key to make a selection. Press the enter key again to deselect. Select right in to enter a name not on the ballot. Press the up arrow to change volume. Press the down arrow to change rate. Next, you'll have the options to customize your tablet's view and or the audio output. Visual options include adjusting the font size as well as the color and contrast. Audio options include adjusting the volume as well as the speaking rate. Let's check out our options. For the text size, pressing enter toggles between standard and larger font sizes. Press the right or left arrow key to continue. This is still not a huge adjustment, so if you need further magnification, press the right or left arrow key to continue. You can pinch or zoom with your fingers on the screen to get the size that you need. Change contrast. For the contrast, you can cycle through standard, high contrast, white on black, and high contrast yellow on black. Volume can be cycled in increments from 20% to 100% simply Volume. by pressing enter. Volume, 80%. Volume, 100%. System default is 60%. Remember, at any time you can adjust the volume by using the up arrow. For speaking rate, you can likewise cycle through the options which will adjust your rate between 33 and 100%. System default is 50%. Anytime during your session, you can adjust the speaking rate by using the down arrow. Press turn on privacy screen. For those who select the keyboard, there's also the option to use a privacy screen to darken the tablet so that only you will know which candidate you have selected. This is not available if you use the touch screen option. Press the right or left arrow key to continue. So to review, to navigate between items, you will be cued to press the right arrow key to move to the next item. The enter key allows you to select an item and modify them if necessary. Now let's look at how to select candidates. The first level heading will be read out loud. Right left arrow key to continue. Offices. It will say offices. Using the right key to advance, you will then hear the office you are voting for and how many selections you can make. Some offices may allow you to select more than one candidate. Let's listen. Contest one of 14. Four. Governor, vote for not more than one. The right and left arrow keys move you forward and back through the names of the candidates. Josiah Bartlett, Democratic. Hannah Dustin, Republican. John Spencer, Libertarian. Using the left arrow key, you can go to a previous name. Hannah Dustin, Republican. John Spencer, Libertarian. Write in, select this option to enter a candidate name. Write-in will always be the last option. To select a candidate or a write-in option, press Enter. When you press Enter, the system will read aloud the name of the candidate John Spencer, you have selected. Libertarian. Selected. John Spencer won a possible one. 
When you press enter, the system will read aloud the name of the candidate you have just selected. Press the right or left arrow key to continue. This provides audio confirmation you have selected your proper candidate. Again, as mentioned in the on-screen instructions, pressing enter will also deselect a candidate should you change your mind or realize you made a mistake. Press the right or left arrow key to continue. Unselected, John Spencer. Let's go to the next page for our next candidate. We'll use the right arrow until we hear next page and then we'll hit enter. Right in, so next page, offices. If you press enter for a write in option, this allows you to type the candidate's name with the keyboard. Each keystroke will be read aloud. Left arrow key to continue. Contest two of 14. Four, United States Senator. Vote for not more than one. John Langdon, Democratic. William Preston, Republican. Write in, select this option to enter a candidate name. Use the keyboard to enter the name. Press the right arrow to continue when finished. Write-in will always be the last option. To select a candidate or a write-in option, press Enter. If you press Enter for a write-in option, this will allow you to type the candidate's name with the keyboard. Each keystroke will be read aloud. There is a bit of a lag with the audio, so you may want to be patient before you begin typing. Selected. Write-in. One of possible one. M. I. C. K. E. Y. Space. M O U S E. When you are done typing, press the right key to continue and then enter when you hear next page. Next page. Offices. After selecting candidates for office, you may then hear constitutional amendment questions, constitutional amendments proposed by the general court. Left arrow key to continue. Constitutional amendment questions. Constitutional amendments proposed by the general court. Pressing the right arrow key again will read the second level heading and then the question being posed. Let's listen to an example. You'll then have the option of selecting yes or no. Press the right or left arrow key to continue. One dot question proposed pursuant to part two, article 100 of the New Hampshire constitution. Shall there be a convention to amend or revise the constitution? Yes. No. Next page. Review your selections. It's important to note that just as with a paper and pen ballot, it is possible to vote incorrectly. What do I mean? Well, it's important that if you're supposed to only vote for not more than one, that you don't vote for two or more. The system will actually allow you to vote for more than one candidate, even if you were instructed to vote for not more than one. This would result in neither vote being counted for that office. Remember, changing your selection does not deselect your previous selection. You must press enter again and hear that you have deselected the candidate. The good news is that you have the option to review your ballot after you have made all of your selections. Your ballot selections are listed below. You may change any selection by clicking the change link next to your selections. After you have reviewed your selections, press the accept and print button. Please note that once you press accept and print, your marked ballot will be printed and you cannot get back to your voting session. Governor, vote for not more than one. J change selection for, for, by pressing enter. Offices. Contest one of 14, Josiah Bartlett, Democratic. Hannah Dustin, Republican. Selected, John Spencer, Libertarian. Unselected, John Spencer. Hannah Dustin, Republican. Selected. Hannah Dustin won a possible one. If you make a change to a selection, you then have the option to return to the review page instead of going through all of the previous screens. Finally, you must tap and hit the accept and print, and then you will hear an announcement. Accept and print. Your ballot is now printing. Thank you for voting. Please deposit your ballot in the ballot box. If ballot did not print, touch here or press enter to lock the screen. Contact poll worker for assistance. There is about a 45 second window between when you hit accept and print and when the system times out and ends your session. So if you have concerns that the ballot did not print, you should hit enter or touch the highlighted area on the screen right away. A poll worker will come in, enter a pin, and then assist you in reprinting your ballot.
When you are satisfied with your choices and satisfied that your ballot has printed, you can tap the upper right hand corner of the screen to end your session. Again, if you take no action after you select accept and print, your session will automatically end after about 45 seconds. End session. Are you sure you want to end your session? Press next to continue. Should you hit end session inadvertently, you will get another prompt, as you just heard, asking if you are sure you want to end your session. You can then hit cancel to resume your session. I was able to wait more than five minutes before I hit cancel, and it took me right back to my ballot where I left off. There are a few important tips to keep in mind that will make your voting experience a little smoother. First, before you arrive at your polling station, you should review the candidates and know who you would like to vote for ahead of time. Second, when you arrive at the polling station, mention that you would like to use the One for All system. If the person you speak to doesn't recognize the name One for All, you could explain that you are looking for the accessible voting system or simply ask to speak to the supervisor. All towns are required to have received training on the system, so there will be someone there who can get you started. Third, be sure to put your headphones on before you interact with the tablet so you don't miss anything. Fourth, and lastly, you may want to be patient and wait for the voice prompts before you go to the next step. Thanks, and have a good day.